Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you The Hickory Tree, starring Agnes Moorhead on the Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Even though you may not be a chemist, you probably know that the formula for water is H2O. But to chemists in the Zeron Xerox Antifreeze Laboratory of DuPont, that's not the whole story. For water from different sections of the country differs widely in the salts it contains and in its corrosive effect on automobile cooling systems. This is so important that our chemists are constantly examining samples of water received from all parts of the country. Then DuPont Antifreeze Research makes sure that the chemical inhibitors in Xerone and Xerex will combat any harmful effects of these widely different waters. Xerone and Xerex are examples of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. America, the Pony Express. The jet-propelled plane. America, the World Series. America means skyscrapers and haylofts, the crack of a pioneer's flintlock, and the sound of the riveter's machine. Home sweet home and the Basin Street Blues. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. Tonight, the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Agnes Moorhead in The Hickory Tree on the Cavalcade of America. It is the year 1780, during the War for Independence. In their cabin in the wilderness of Waxhaw County of North Carolina, Elizabeth Jackson and her two sons stand tensely, anxiously. One of the sons is Andrew, later to be known as Old Hickory, 7th President of the United States. But right now, an excited boy of 13, as he listens to... The candles, Andy. Snuff them out. I'm off. Stand by me with the other musket robbery lad. I... Open up! Be up, you murdering bushwhackers! Bring up taxes, men! There'll be a whole band of bushwhackers, Ma. Andy, open the door. But, but, Ma... Do the same, son. Open it up and stand clear of the muskets. Oh! Shoot, Robbie! <laughs> Do you think it's those bushwhackers come again, Ma? If it is, we'll give them what Easy, we... Easy, lads, and don't shoot until you know what you're shooting at. Yes? Who be out there? Chuck McPherson, Mr. Oh, Sergeant. it's Chuck. Chuck the peddler. Uh. Yeah, greetings, friend. How oh, and welcome you are indeed, Mr. McPherson. You'll forgive our latch string hanging in, but times like these, you know. Uh. We never expected to see you. No. And why not, lad? Is my job, is it not, bringing folks here in the backwoods the things they need? But with a war on, you should be shouldering a musket instead of a peddler's pack. Andy? Oh, Mrs. Jackson. Then it's go the lad. I'm no offended. Couldn't expect him to know. Jock is doing more for the American cause but than any hush, tent. Hush, well, you are, you are. Oh, so that's it, you old swamp fox. I wager you carry more in your head than you do in your pack, eh, Jock? Uh, perhaps. But one thing I didn't carry in my head... Is a loose tongue, laddie. And let that be a caution to you two clatterboxes. The bushwhackers came down on us, Jock. Aye, ah, yesterday eve. They tried to chop the door down. No, we gave it to them good. You should have seen them run for their lives. Oh, hold your crack, lad. La, what an unholy clatter. And Mr. McPherson barely a foot through the door. <laughs> Set another platter, Robbie. Hi, Ma. And rest your pack, good man, and come sup with us. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Jackson. <laughs> well, what news of the war, Mr. McPherson? The war has come to the wax, though, friends. Oh? There's more than cowardly bushwhackers we have to fear. Uh, Why? What mean you, Mr. McPherson? The British have landed at Charlestown. No, really? Aye. They'll soon be down upon the wax, Oh, not if Major Davy and his Carolina boys have anything to say about it. Aye, Davy will drive every last one of them into the sea. Perhaps you forget Brother Hughes was Davy. Uh, aye. 
Why, if they as much as dare come this way, brother, you... Ah, hush, Andy, lad, hush, hush. Listen to me for a wee bit. I come from Davy's camp oh? with news for the patriots of the Waxhaw. The news will not gladden your hearts, but as best you know, for you're all in mortal danger. What? What is it, Mr. McPherson? Major Davy's army has been routed by the British. Oh, no. No, that uh, could not be, Jock. They were outnumbered, lad. Five to one. But they're in the right. And if you're in the right, I thought... You win out in the end? Aye, but not without setbacks and losses. Davy's forces at the moment are in full retreat. Many a brawny lad has fallen. Have you... Have you heard aught of my son, Hugh? I had no time to inquire, Mistress Jackson. Major David dispatched me with a message to the people of the Waxhaw. What is the message? He can't possibly hope to reorganize his forces this side of Hanging Rock. Davy wants every male who can carry a gun to join him at Hanging Rock within the month. Aye. For there he means to make a stand. The outcome of that battle will settle the future of the Waxhaw. It'll be them or us. Every male who can carry a gun... Why, well, that means me and Robin. Hush, Andrew. I can handle a musket as good as anyone. I can place a ball through the eye of a squirrel at two and Oh, you're only a child, Andrew, a boy of 13. I can shoot. That's what they're looking for. The, uh, the situation is, uh, is very grave, Mr. Jackson. Very grave. Why? Why are you looking at my young ones like, like that, man? Mother, you heard what Jock said. Major... Hold Bat- your tongue, Robbie. For shame, Jock McPherson, putting rash thoughts like that in the heads of children. Sure, I did hold your tongues. Mr. McPherson, if that's why you came to my door, you can take up your pack and leave this very instant. Well, I swear I hadn't a thought like that in my head, I swear. Oh, well, I don't. I don't. Maybe not. Maybe not. Mr. Mc... McPherson, I... This wilderness took my husband. Now my eldest Hugh is away fighting. And for all I know, he may lie dead. I... But all these hardships must be borne so that our children and their children may have a fair chance in a new land. Yes, you're right. You're right. Mr. McPherson. Aye? You say you brought those scissors I bade you fetch by this way? Aye, the finest pair this side of Glasgow. Oh, let me have them. And Robbie? Aye? Fetch my garments from the loft. Your, your garments, Yes, loft? I'll be cutting them up for bandages tonight. Mr. McPherson, Andy and Robbie may not go to battle, but their mother can. I'm leaving for Hanging Rock in the morning. It is a dangerous and foolhardy trip, Mistress Jackson. But... May the Lord keep you and bring you back safe. Hand me up the saddlebags, Andrew. Yes, Lord. And don't look so sorrowful, Andy. I'll be quite safe. It ain't that much. It's just that I want to go, too. Please, Ma, please let me ride with you to hanging Nay, up. Andrew, you're to stay home here. Robbie, you look after you. I don't need looking after. Oh. <laughs> you are a little rebel, aren't you, Master Andrew? Don't call me that. Oh, tosh, lad. There's better men than you called rebels these days. General Washington himself. We're not rebels. We're patriots. We're standing up for our land, fighting for the things we think are right. This is a free country and free people. Andrew, freedom. this is no time to be making speeches. <laughs> He's got the spirit in him, though. When he grows up, we'll be hearing from him, I'll wager, defending the cause of free men. Please, Ma, let me ride with you to hang and rock. Oh, no, oh, Robbie, you're to stay at home and watch after Andy. I don't need watching oh, after... No, no, be good, lads. Come now, kiss your mother goodbye. If I'm not back within a fortnight, make your way to Aunt Jane's plantation at Ten Mile Creek. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye. Please, Ma, take care and come back soon. No, no, don't you worry. Your Ma can take care of herself. Goodbye, Mr. McPherson. God be with you, Ma'am, and keep you safe. Get up. Get up, Peppy. Ah, uh, laddies, a braver heart never beat. Robbie, fetch the log can from the cabin and start cleaning the muskets. I'll get the pony saddled up. Hey, now, look you here, you young cockalorums. You, you two beans. Aye, Jock. We're heading for Davy's camp at Hanging Rock. Water. Oh, water. Oh, my arm. More bandages, Mrs. Jackson. More bandages. Oh, son, those king's regulars. 
They can handle muskets better than we reckon. Like still, man. Oh. While I get that ball out of your arm. Where are the bandages, Doctor? Cut away his breech leg, ma'am. Yes. See to that wound in his leg. All right. No, use the knife. Oh. That buckskin is too tough for your shears. If, if it's all the same to you, Doctor, could you tend to my leg and, and let the good woman here look to my arm? Lad, this is no time for a show of modesty. Oh. Now, easy. Easy. It ain't me. It's, it's her I'm thinking of. Oh. There. That's out. Wash out the wound, ma'am, and bandage. Let me look to his leg. The ball went right through, sir. Good. Save him the pain probing for it. Well, I'll finish up with him, Doctor. Doctor, here are some more men. Oh. Land of Joshua, look. They're bringing more wounded up. I'll get some more hay from the loft and spread it on the barn floor. Where? Where will we set them, Doctor? Over yonder, neath the hayloft. I'll look for them soon. Here, take care of him, woman. Got to get back to the crossing. He's got a bad... Saints alive! Jeb. Aunt Elizabeth! Jeb Crawford, are you hurt, nephew? Oh, just a strip off on my scalp. Nothing to it. Oh, wait, wait, Jeb, wait. Oh, Andy, I've got to get back to the Jeb, crossing. Jeb, have you seen or heard aught of you, my eldest? I can't say I have, Andy. Uh, not since the Battle of Stone Ferry, leastways... But I can tell you those two little wildcat youngins are yours. Robbie and Andy? Well, you're at home. <laughs> I reckon I know my own kin when I see them. Where are they, Jeb? Tell me. Well, last time I saw them, they were down in the meadow about a mile yonder, popping away at everything they could see, having the time of their young lives. <laughs> Those red uniforms sure make prime targets, don't they, Andy? Did, did you do for that one, Robbie? No, not exactly. You mean you missed? Missed? I hit what he was a-showing. What were he a-showing, Robbie? His coattails. <laughs> Guess I'll be one set of pants and won't be sitting down for a long, long time, eh, Robbie? Oh, keep your head down, you dang fool. Want to get a ball through your head, do you? I just wanted to see where the... Keep your head down like I tell you, or I'll lay up you with this ramrod. So help me, I will. Now, hand me your powder horn. Hmm. Won't do you a mite of good. Empty? Not a grain. Just about to ask me uh, you to pass me yours. Tarnation. Well, there's no sense in our staying here. Robbie. Robbie, look yonder. There's a whole mess of the enemy are coming up. Lord of me, look at them lined up as if they were parading. We well, only have some ammunition. Well, we haven't any. So we better get and get fast. Let's run for the brush. All right. Come on. Hurry, Andy, hurry. They've seen us. Oh. Andy, Andy, can you hit? I guess so. My leg. Why? Your leg. It's all a blood, Andy. How, how does your leg feel, Andy? I fit again, Robbie. Ah, but what good are legs in this hole of a prison? Can't go nowhere. Laura, me, Robbie, there was no sense in you being catched, too. You should have run for the woods. Ron told me not to let you out of my sight, so why keep talking about it? Because I still think there was no sense to it. That'd be why. Robbie, when do you think they'll let us go? I don't know. Think we'll be here till... till the war's over? Perhaps. Robbie. Hi. You reckon Mom knows where we be? Maybe. And I wager if she did know, she'd get us out. Aye, uh, Robbie, you know, Ma. She'd ride like all get out into Camden. I clear up to the prison gate and she'd... Andy, help. do hush that fool mouth of yours. You, you feeling bad, Robbie? I, I reckon it's the heat that bothered me, Andy. Heat? Well, on me, Robbie, it's chill enough in here to freeze a body's very soul. Robbie, you haven't been took. You haven't been took with a scourge, have you? Robbie, have you now? No, no, I'm all right. Hey, let me feel your head, Robbie. No, I tell you, stay away. I, I, I'm all right. Oh, Robbie. Andy Jackson, you, you, you come an inch close and I'll strike you down. You mind me? I'll strike you down. So help me heaven, I will. <laughs> You're quite certain, Doctor, that you can get along without me now. Lord bless you, my dear, of course. Though how we could have ever managed without you in those terrible days after the battle, I know not. Well, I did what any American mother would have done for my sons. That's why they have the sons they do. I run along home. Heaven only knows how much you need a rest. Oh, I'm afraid I can't go home yet, Dr. Colden. My young ones sorely need me elsewhere. What? 
You heard from Andrew and Robert? I. They're in the enemy prison at Camden. Oh. Well, at least you have the consolation of knowing they're alive and well. Oh, if it were only so, Doctor. Hmm? What else have you heard? They're both gravely ill. Then perhaps Major Davy can arrange to have them freed in an exchange of prisoners. Now I'll oh, call. there's no time for that. What do you mean? Oh, that'll take days. My lads are took with the smallpox. I've got to get to them immediately and not at all. listening to Agnes Moorhead as Elizabeth Jackson in The Hickory Tree on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Elizabeth Jackson has arrived in Camden to see her two sons, Andrew and Robert, who have been imprisoned by the British. We see her now facing the commandant of Camden Prison. Lord Rawdon? Yes, mistress. Pleased to be seated. Might I inquire of your name and the purpose of this visit? Elizabeth Jackson, sir. What concern of you with me? My two lads are being held in Camden as prisoners of war. I I beg of you... Mistress Jackson, if you have made this journey in some vain hope to effect their release, then I am sorry to inform you that your mission is indeed (laughs) ill-advised. Fetch me the prison file, Captain. Sir, you must listen. If you please, have... my good woman. Here's the list of prisoners, my lord. Thank I you. presume these children are the two rebels. Ah. Robert Jackson, age 15. Andrew Jackson, age... To the saints, only 13. Aye, uh... sir, my young ones. Children, they're just mere children. Taken at the engagement before hanging rock whilst bearing arms. Mistress Jackson... If they were old enough to take up arms against his majesty's troops, then children will know they're old enough to suffer the consequences for their acts against the crown. Uh, Indeed, I... I am sorry, Mistress Jackson. But were I to order their release, I'd be lacking in duty to my king and country. But they're ill. They're near death with the plague. How can you talk of duty to me, their own mother? Uh, You... You love those sons of yours, don't you? Oh, I do indeed, sir. I love them more than anything on God's earth. And you would do anything within your power to gain their release? I sir, anything. Very well, my dear woman, we shall see. Captain! Aye, my lord. Uh, write out a release of those two young rebels. Oh, may heaven bless you, sir. Aye, Mistress Jackson, I will grant the release, but... Aye, but what, sir? There is a condition. A condition? What? Their freedom, perhaps their very lives, depend upon your answering three questions. Honestly and to the best of your knowledge. What are the questions, sir? One, how many men are under Major Davies' command? Two, what arms have they at their disposal? Three, by what means and in what manner do they receive their supplies? Well, Mistress Jackson. I see. I see. You expect me to buy my son's freedom with the lives and blood of my countrymen. Well, Mistress Jackson, you love your sons. I, I but... love my sons. I love them too well to see the mother that bore them turn traitor to their country. Good day, sir. Uh, Mistress Jackson. I? In truth, I did not expect you to answer my questions. Perchance it just amused an English gentleman to torture a woman? No. No, by heavens. You think I have no feelings? Well, I have a home family in England. Were it not for my duty to my king and country... Duty! I, I... Duty to your king and country! What manner of king, what manner of country is yours no. that demands that children be cast into a plague-ridden prison to suffer a horrible certain death? What will it serve you, your country, or your beloved king, if my sons die in Camden Jail? Will that and only that satisfy your precious sense of duty? You mock my sense of duty. What of your own sense of duty, madam? I do to your own countrymen, for which you'd sacrifice the lives of your two sons. Rather see them die. Oh, yes, there's allegiance prison. to a cause, not a king, mm. sir. The cause of free men fighting for justice and liberty is the best cause. It's a cause worth dying for. Were I to betray that, I do not betray a king, nor just a people, or a country alone. I betray humanity itself. Is... Is that how all you Americans feel? All liberty-loving Americans, sir. Then I would see this cursed struggle over with. 
Aye, and that today, if it is not, but a waste of precious English lives trying to stem the inevitable. Oh, I beg of you, sir. I beg of you. If you won't free my boys, at least give me the consolation of seeing them, tending them in their illness. That won't be necessary, my dear Mistress Jackson. Captain, give me that release order. I am alone. Yes. You're going to... You're going to sign to free... Yes, yes. Take your precious young rebels. Oh. Take them home, Mistress. And for the sake of all that's holy... See if you can employ that irresistible eloquence of yours to keep them there. Ma! Yes. Ma! Yes, Andy, my lad, here I am, son. Here's your ma. Oh, I was dreaming. Dreaming I was back in that Camden prison. Oh, you're home, son. You're home. 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 I don't reckon home ever looked so good to anyone as it does to me. Oh, yes, it has. Yes, it has. It looks like that to everyone. All our neighbors here in the wilderness, the folks all over Waxhaw County, all through North Carolina, up and down the whole land. That's why they're fighting, Andrew. To keep these homes they've built and the ones they're going to build as the country opens up. It... Oh. But listen to me running on and you're still so weak you can hardly stand. I won't be once I get some vittles inside me. <laughs> oh, me, Ma, I'm powerful hungry. Uh, oh, I'm so hungry I could eat my buckskin breeches, <laughs> horn buttons and all. Oh, son, I reckon you're sure of getting well again. Ma, how's Robbie doing at Aunt Jane's? Is he up and about and powerful hungry like me? Is he, Ma? And... Oh, you're crying, Ma. I never saw you cry before. What's amiss? Is is Robbie... Andy, lad. Robbie isn't at Aunt Jane's. He isn't? Then where... Robbie never was at Aunt Jane's, Andy. And you told me... Oh, well, you were very ill on the ride home, lad. You were out of your head with a fever. The good Lord saw fit to spare you, son. But he took Robbie. You mean... Robbie's dead. Hmm? Brother Robbie. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Andy. Don't cry, Mom. Please don't cry. <clears throat> you still have me and Hugh. Nay, no, lad. I just have you. Just you. Your brother. Your brother Hugh, he died of his wounds at Stone Ferry. Ma. <laughs> huh? When I get well again, will you permit me to go back to the war? Well, I'll not hold you, Andy, my son. I must fight, Ma, for Robbie and you, now that they're gone. Yes. Yes, you may as well go, Andrew. I, too, will be gone from here. You're going away, Ma? Ah, yes, lad. But where, Ma? Oh, where? anywhere the fighting is, Andy. There'll be much for me to do. The good Lord has seen fit to take two of my sons. But there are other sons, Andy. And while there's blood in my body and strength in my bones, I'll not turn away from them. For they're my sons, too. And if by some mischance I don't return, Andrew... Then it'll be yours to keep the roots of freedom strong. And the tree of liberty green forever. moment, our star, Agnes Moorhead, will return. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. When you go shopping for food, do you squeeze the tomatoes and pinch the peaches? Well, that little habit, and most of us have it, ruins millions of pounds of fresh vegetables and fruits every year. Now, add all the spoilage and waste that takes place between the farm and your table, and you get a figure that's pretty shocking in these days when people in some countries are hungry. More than a quarter of all the fresh fruits and vegetables grown in the United States are thrown out as garbage or other waste before they reach your table. 
This waste has to be paid for through higher prices for the fruits and vegetables that are actually sold. If waste can be lessened, it will help keep prices down. In an effort to reduce the present high waste figure, some interesting experimental work is being done by progressive organizations in the food field. Grocery retailers, produce wholesalers, growers and specialists from leading universities, as well as engineers from refrigeration and packaging supplies, and cellophane packaging specialists from the DuPont Company. The results of these experiments look so promising that someday in the future, when merchandise is freely available and when enough packaging materials are available, you may have a new type of produce department in your favorite store. Instead of spending a lot of time trying to choose the best of the fruits and vegetables left after other shoppers have handled them, you'll find them neatly arranged in gleaming, transparent packages. Yours will be a complete freedom of choice, and you won't have to wait for a clerk to help you. You'll just take out a package of apples or spinach and pay the price marked on it. Shopping will be more convenient, faster, easier. You won't have to do a lot of trimming and washing when you get home. The things you buy will be cleaner and fresher, many of them ready to cook. And this method, called prepackaging, will sharply reduce waste. Prepackaging fresh produce is one of the latest ways in which DuPont cellophane, a product of chemical science improved in quality and continually reduced in price by American business ingenuity, better serves you, protects foodstuffs that reach your table. Transparent, moisture-proof, clean, economical, cellophane shows you what you buy and at the same time protects what it shows. It not only helps to prevent fruit and vegetable waste, but brings these products to you at their best. It helps the grower, the retailer, and you. Cellophane is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now here's our star, Agnes Moorhead. Thank you, Jane. It was a pleasure tonight to play Elizabeth Jackson because... The mother of Andrew Jackson is an excellent example of the kind of mother who gave direction and inspiration to a great American. I feel that particularly these days, we need more insight and understanding of these truly great persons, the mothers of America, whose spirit and sacrifice, sympathy and unfaltering faith are the cornerstone of our country. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. in Mr. Cunningham Sweeps the Seas. It's an adventurous, exciting story based on the real-life experience of Gustavus Cunningham of the United States Navy. Cunningham, in 1777, was a one-man Navy facing a mighty English fleet dominating the high seas. And his gallant fight against great odds, his capture and escape make a true epic tale of the Revolutionary War. Listen in next Monday to Mr. Cunningham Sweeps the Seas, starring Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Tonight's play was written by Henry Walsh. Agnes Moorhead is one of the stars of the new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, The Beginning or the End. In the cast with Agnes Moorhead tonight were Walter Tetley as Andy, Conrad Binion as Robbie, William Johnstone as McPherson, Herb Butterfield as Colden, and Hans Conrad as Rawdon. This is John Easton inviting you to listen next week to Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. in Mr. Cunningham Sweeps the Seas. On the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.